we're going to talk for a few minutes about cooking, the proper kind of pots and pans to buy, how to saute without oil, the proper kind of bakeware. When you cook without oil, there are several types of pans that you need. For cooking without any oil or without any liquid, you need good quality nonstick cookware, both for griddles and for frying pans. This frying pan I have used in my home for the last eight years, almost every morning for breakfast. It cleans up beautifully. Nothing sticks to it. And if you invest in high-quality cookware, it'll be with you for a long time. If you only spend a few dollars for a pan, you can expect that it's not going to last very long. So take the time to invest in high-quality cookware, and it'll be well worth your while. You see this griddle here that has some potato patties on it. I also use that for burgers, which I cook dry. But anything that you're going to use a liquid with, such as sautéing onions or sautéing other vegetables, you don't really need a nonstick pan. You can use a high-quality um, stainless steel pan. And because you're sautéing in some type of a liquid, things are not going to stick to it. These are some of my favorite pans that I use all the time. You see the large stainless steel soup pan. Remember I told you I like to make soup in the wintertime, and I use a big pan to do that. This other pot right here is another one of my favorites. It's a pasta pot. It has an insert inside that has holes in it. So you cook your pasta in a lot of water. And then when it's finished cooking, you just lift it out, give it a few shakes, and pour your pasta into a bowl. You don't have to carry the whole pot over to the sink with the boiling water and try and dump it into a colander. And you could burn yourself or something else, and this works much better. It also works for steaming vegetables. You put a small amount of water in the bottom, you put your vegetables in the little basket with the holes in it, and you steam your vegetables that way, which avoids those wonderful collapsible baskets that always collapse at the wrong time. You're taking your vegetables out and the basket just sort of falls apart. This works much better. Now sauteing without oil is really very simple. And the easiest thing in the thing that I use the most to saute in is just a little bit of water. There are a lot of things that you can use, though. You can use vegetable broth, a little white wine, oil-free salad dressings, soy sauce, barbecue sauce. If you use barbecue sauce, thin it out a little bit with water so it's rather thin. Try sauteing onions in a little bit of barbecue sauce and then putting them on top of a burger. It's wonderful. You can do the same thing with salsa. For Mexican-type foods, thin it out with a little bit of water first and then saute in these things. There are several products here that I would not be without. One of them is made by Pacific Foods of Oregon. It's called Vegetable Broth. It's an organic product. You can buy it in most supermarkets and every natural food store that I've ever seen. And I buy it by the case because it doesn't have to be refrigerated. It comes in a little box, pasteurized. You can store it in your pantry, and you never run out. It adds a lot of flavor to soups, to stews, um, to sauces. And you just use a little bit, cover it back up, put it back in the refrigerator, and store it that way. Now, when you're baking, it's a little more difficult. And you have to use the proper pans again, and they come in all different varieties. You can spend from a dollar, this little pie plate in the front here, I bought for a dollar. And I've never used it. It's mainly for demonstration purposes, but I know about how long it would last. So again, the more money you spend for something, the longer it's going to last. I have a bread pan that I have used since we lived in Hawaii. And so it's probably 15 years old. And it's still in wonderful condition because I took the time to invest in high-quality bakeware. And so, again, it's much worth your while to invest in this, these kind of products. Um, there is another uh, company that makes nonstick bakeware, and that is Our Cuisine. And that is these pans here that uh, look like uh, casserole dishes. They are glass. They have a silicone coating over the top, so your casseroles don't stick when you put them in the oven. And they clean up excellently, very simple to clean up. 
And so that's another quality product that I have in my kitchen. Now, baking without oil is one of the most difficult things to do. And when I first started cooking this way, this was where I had most of my failures. And so there were several tricks that I learned along the way, and I'll share them with you. The first one is to make sure that you do not overmix your food. You'll notice in all of my recipes, I tell you to combine the dry ingredients in one bowl and the moist ingredients in another bowl. And then I say to combine them briefly. And this really means just a few stirs, just so it's mixed. When we used to teach classes in Honolulu, we had a home economics classroom, and we had eight different kitchens. And the first night we taught um, how to cook Mexican food. And so there were eight different groups of people, and we made beans and tortillas, and we chopped up onions and, and tomatoes, and we had a wonderful Mexican meal. And we had cornbread with our meal. And now I always told them the same thing I'm telling you. Now make sure you don't overbeat your corn bre cornbread because it's not going to turn out well. And every class without fail, there were at least two of the cornbreads that we could not eat because they were about this high <laughs> and not tender. And some of the times that I made muffins and things like that, I mean, I couldn't even get my dogs to eat them. They were so <laughs> tough. So this is really important. You know, usually when you have a lot of fat in food, you can stir it and stir it and stir it, and it's okay. But you can't do that when you leave out the fat. The other thing you can do is use a little bit of sparkling water in place of water because the bubbles will tend to make things a little bit lighter. The other thing that is difficult is to bake without the oil because the oil makes things moist and tender. And years ago, when I started cooking this way, a lot of the products that are on the market now to make it easier for you were not available. You'll notice in a lot of my earlier cookbooks, the fat replacer that I used most often was applesauce because that was about all there was at that time. But now companies have come out with these wonderful products to replace the fat in baking, and it makes it so much easier, and your products turn out consistently well. Two of these are Lighter Bake and Wonder Slim. These are both fat and egg replacers, basically made out of plums and apples. And they are about the consistency of applesauce. You can find them in natural food stores. You can find them in supermarkets. And I'll tell you something else, you can also make your own. And my mother-in-law loves to make cookies for the grandchildren. And she makes it with a fat replacer. But she says, you know, if I had to buy the fat replacer to make all the cookies that I make, it would, it would be too expensive. So she makes her own. And it's very simple to do. You buy pitted prunes in the supermarket and you put them in a blender jar with a small amount of water, depending on how many prunes you're going to use. And you blend them, adding more water as necessary, until it becomes about the consistency of applesauce. And you can store it in the refrigerator. Use it the same way that you would use the Lighter Bake and the Wonder Slim. And it's a very inexpensive way to do it. Keeps in the refrigerator for about a month. So you can make a large amount if you're going to do a lot of baking. You can use mashed bananas. You can use silken tofu. But remember, tofu contains fat. Even the fat-reduced tofu that you can buy in the supermarkets these days still contains about 33% fat. So naturally, it works well as a fat replacer <laughs> because it has fat in it. There are other products that you can use. Um, egg replacer replaces eggs in baking. It doesn't make anything that resembles scrambled eggs. It's a flour product. It's used for leavening and binding. Works very well. Remember when you use it, it tells you to mix it with a small amount of water and it will give the exact proportions for the number of eggs you are replacing. Beat it with a whisk 
until it becomes very frothy because it works much better that way. And then after you beat it with a whisk, you add it to your moist ingredients, mix it in gently, and use it that way. Cocoa powder. There is only one cocoa powder on the market that I can recommend because it has had the caffeine and the fat removed from it. It is made by Wonderslim, the same company that makes the fat replacer. It comes in cans, little round cans, and it says Wonderslim Cocoa Powder. And you can find that in every natural food store and some supermarkets. The other thing I use a lot of is parchment paper. Parchment paper is sold usually near the plastic wraps in the supermarket. Uh, sometimes natural food stores also carry it. Parchment paper is nice for lining baking pans or loaf pans because food does not stick to it. I also use it to cover casseroles and the baking dishes when I want to use aluminum foil. Now I like the qualities of aluminum foil because it really seals in the moisture. So when I'm baking lasagna or enchiladas or something like that, I will use parchment paper first on top of the food because the food doesn't stick to it. And then I will use aluminum foil. The other reason I do that is because I don't want aluminum foil to come in contact with my food. There's too many concerns about Alzheimer's disease and aluminum, so I won't have foil next to my food. And as a matter of fact, I'm concerned enough about this that when I make these huge vegetable sandwiches for my son, I can't put them in a plastic bag because the vegetables all fall off the the sandwich before he gets to it. So I will wrap his sandwich in parchment paper first, and then I'll put aluminum foil around it so I can seal it tightly so the vegetables don't fall off. So that's one product that I think is worthwhile investing in is some parchment paper, and it's a very cheap investment. Now, one of the things that people complain about when they start to eat this way is the problems with gas. Now, I have to admit, you know, this, this can be a problem. It's much more difficult when you're changing from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet because then you're going to have these little wars going on. And so you have much bigger problems. But there are books written about it. I have several of these little ladder spoons in my kitchen. You can buy them in gourmet cooking stores. And they all come with this little label attached. It'll be attached to the handle of the spoon. And it tells you to place the spoon in the pot while cooking any kind of beans. Do not remove. The spoon will help remove the gas out of the beans because the little farts will climb the ladder and <laughs> fall out of the pan. <laughs> and I always have people ask me, does it work? <laughs> it makes a really good conversation piece to store in your kitchen. But no, it doesn't work. There are several things that people claim do work. One of them is Beano. I don't know if you've heard of Beano before. Beano is a vegetable enzyme product sold in both pill form and in liquid form. And you put a little bit on the first mouthful of whatever it is that bothers you, whether it's beans or broccoli or cabbage or whatever, and it's supposed to help with the gas problem. And some people swear by it. And they carry it around in their purse or in their pocket, and they won't go anywhere without it. And I have other people say, well, I tried it. It doesn't work for me. So you might want to try it if you're having problems and see if it works for you. There's only one thing I know that works for sure, and that is to sprout the beans. If you take dried beans and you sprout them, you don't have the problem. But in order to do this, you really have to plan ahead. Okay, You put the beans in a huge pot with plenty of water to cover, so they're covered all the time. And they're going to swell, so you need to have enough water so that they stay covered all the time. And you soak them for 12 hours. Then you pour off all the water and you lay the beans in a single layer in a baking dish that has a damp paper towel in the bottom of it. 
and you let them sit on the counter for another 12 hours. See what I mean by planning ahead? (laughs) And in that second 12 hours, they're going to sprout. Just a little tiny sprout. It's not going to have green stuff hanging over. It's just going to be this little tiny white sprout that you can hardly see. But in sprouting, they use up the sugar that we have a hard time digesting that gives us all the problems. Makes them much more digestible. You can freeze them after you sprout them. So you can make a lot at one time and then just put them in the freezer. They're going to take much less time to cook because they've soaked and sprouted for such a long time. They're not going to taste any different. But you'll notice a great difference in the digestibility of the beans. Remember, cooking is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to have a good time in the kitchen. Try and experiment with some new things. But don't spend all day there either. Invest in good quality cookware and good quality bakeware because it'll make your life much, much easier. They're much easier to use. They're much easier to clean up. And they're going to last a long time. Remember to saute in various liquids. Experiment with some different things. When you're bringing your water to a boil before you put your vegetables in, add some herbs and spices. Gives a little more flavor. Try the vegetable broth. That also adds a lot of flavor. In baking, remember, don't overmix. And also remember, when you're using a fat replacer in baking, if you're going to take one of your own recipes and try and experiment with different things, Remember to use half the amount of fat that a recipe calls for. If you're going to take your old recipe for banana bread and it calls for a cup of oil and you want to replace it with a fat replacer, only use a half a cup of the fat replacer. One cup will make it too moist and um, it'll be better if you use just a little bit less. Go through your cookbooks your old favorite recipes. Try and see if you can change some of them just by taking out a little bit of the oil, leaving out the meat, using soy instead of dairy. A lot of your old favorites can easily be made into healthy things, and then they'll be familiar to you. That's how I got started, by taking old favorites. And I think that'll make it easier to transition into a healthy way of eating. We're going to talk for a few minutes about eating out because I know everyone likes to eat out. You don't want to just feel you always have to cook at home. And there are so many ways that you can eat out and make it fun while doing it. First, we're going to show you a video that John made about eating out in fast food restaurants. You can even do it in a fast food restaurant. And what we're talking about here is doing the best you can. It might not be perfect, so you want to do the best you can. There are certain things in life people don't want to give up, like the joy of dining out with friends or the convenience of fast food. Well, I say you don't have to give those things up. You just have to be smart about it. And here are some ideas. This is not the kind of restaurant one normally thinks of when they want to eat a vegetarian diet. But just between you and me, I like to eat in places like this, and let me show you why. I'd like to have baked potato, no butter, no sour cream. I want steamed vegetables. Again, hold the butter, rice pilaf, and I'd like the salad bar. Now, does the soup come with the salad bar? Yes. As a matter of fact, the pasta bar and soup bar comes with the entire fresh fruit and salad bar. Now, wasn't that easy? This is one of my favorite salad bars. I can just go crazy here. You start out with a little green salad, maybe add a couple extra tomatoes. You can uh, use some green pepper here. Now, you've got to be a little careful with the potato salad and some of the other salads because they're loaded with mayonnaise and oils. I like to add a few extra peas, uh, some wax beans, yeah? I like wax beans a lot. And some kidney beans and a little bit of corn. And we'll top it off with a few sprouts. And just for a little bit of extra flavor, we'll just sprinkle a little bit of this on. 
Now let's go see what's on the other side. Now you notice we're going to pass this, which is full of a mayonnaise type dressing. Of course, pass the eggs up. And this salad doesn't look like it's so full of oil. So let's try a little bit here. And we'll pass the cottage cheese and the eggs and, oh, little trees. Love little trees. And maybe a couple onions. And a few more green beans here. Now, I just, I have to give up because my plate's full. And look what we have here, a vegetarian minestrone soup. Boy, was I happy to find out that they have noodles made without eggs here. And take a look at this marinara sauce. This is rich, red, delicious marinara sauce. I mean, how could you ask for anything tastier than this? Now, here's the rest of your order. Okay, maybe I did order a little too much. But you know, even if I ate all this, it's not gonna do me any harm. If you're not a vegetarian, I'd like you to try eating like one for just one evening. I guarantee you're gonna feel better. I'd like to thank Sizzler for their cooperation in this segment. And I'd like to thank all restaurants out there that serve healthy alternatives. Now, if you'll excuse me for a minute, I gotta get down to some serious eating. People are always telling me their lives are so busy they don't have time to eat right but I believe you could eat healthfully even in a fast food restaurant. And today I'm gonna to show you how. Burger King's new slogan is sometimes you gotta break the rules. Let's go in and break a few. I'd like to have a Whopper. Now you say I can have it my way, right? Yes. All right, I want a veggie Whopper, and that means no meat. Okay, I'd like to have lettuce, tomatoes, onions, pickles, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of mustard, and no mayonnaise. And I'd also like to have one of your garden salads with your low-calorie dressing. Do you remember the Wendy's slogan, where's the beef? Well, who cares when you can eat like I do? Hi, I'd like to have a baked potato with broccoli, but no cheese. And uh, I'd like to have the salad bar with lemon wedges. And how about a glass of water? At the salad bar, choose low-fat items. Mushrooms, and carrots with lots of vitamins and minerals, some cauliflower, a little bit of broccoli, adds an interesting green color, some sprouts, a few onions, I really love onions, adds an interesting flavor, and we can put a few of these peas on the side. Now, don't ruin this delicious salad by dumping oil all over it, Pass right by these oily items, right down to the vinegar, and top with vinegar. Or you could use a lemon wedge. You'll have no trouble finding a delicious and healthy meal at Wendy's with a baked potato and a delicious salad. Uh, yes, I'd like to have a baked potato and salsa and also a glass of water. Thank you. Please drive forward. Yeah, I know. Another baked potato. But at least I had something healthy to order. Good times, great taste, and good health at McDonald's. Let me show you how. I'd like to have a garden salad, but I want you to leave off all the cheese and the egg. And I'd also like to have the light vinaigrette dressing. The garden salad contains 112 calories and 107 milligrams of cholesterol. By eliminating the eggs and cheese, you reduce the calories to less than 50, and you eliminate all the cholesterol. After all, your health deserves a break today.
It's been a long day. Now let's see what we've learned. You could order a cheeseburger at more than 500 calories, more than 100 milligrams of cholesterol. Or you could order a salad, a potato, or a sandwich with very few calories and absolutely no cholesterol. The choice is yours, and I know you're not too busy to make the right one. Now I've got to take these items home to my wife. It was a nightmare, like something from the Twilight Zone. I was out of control, a man possessed. I would do anything to get what I wanted. And then, there it was, pizza. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. How could I, John McDougall, espouser of the low-fat diet and all-around health nut, eat oil-drenched pizza? What if someone saw me? How could I face the humiliation? But a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And what would you like? I want a medium combination pizza. Everything on that? I want no pepperoni, no salami, no sausage, and no ground beef. Anything else? Yes, I want no cheese. What? No cheese. No cheese? Charlie, we got another weirdo out here. Then mercifully, I woke up. And the next day, I'd like to have a medium vegetarian pizza, no cheese. No problem. While I waited, I asked the manager why people eat cheeseless pizza. Some people have allergic problems to the cheese, and the other reason is for the fat and the cholesterol that's contained in the cheese. It's just another type of way to make a pizza. We made them so many different ways, it's just another different way. Thank you. By passing up the cheese, I've eliminated 700 calories and 200 milligrams of cholesterol, but not a bit of good taste. Believe me, this pizza is a dream come true. See, you can go out to eat. There's lots of things you can do. And as you noticed in some of these things, they weren't exactly perfect. There might have been a little oil in something, but you're doing the best you can. So you learn to ask questions, and you make healthy choices. And then you can enjoy eating out again. Here in Sonoma County, we have many restaurants that serve McDougal-style food right on the menu. So you can go into a restaurant and know you're going to get something that's healthy and it's going to be made the right way. But when you travel around the country or when people visit here from other places, they might not know about this. Or in your own hometown, you're going to have to be a little more creative. They had a contest several years ago in Sonoma County, which restaurant served the best McDougal-style food. And East West Restaurant won the prize. They have a wide variety of food on the menu that is McDougal-style. And people like to have a lot of choices when they go out to eat. There are several restaurants that only have one or two things. But some of those are our favorites. Don't you very often order the same thing when you go to a restaurant? People don't like to have a lot of choices. They, they get a favorite thing and they go back to that restaurant so they can get that favorite item. And John and I are the same way. So what you need to do is find a few good restaurants that serve healthy foods and then go back there and reinforce the fact that these people are serving healthy foods and that you like to eat there because of that. Now, obviously, this place is not a place where you'd think of to get a healthy meal. But this is a typical breakfast that John and I order whenever we travel, whether it's in a buffet at the Mirage, or whether we order room service, or whether we go down to a restaurant. We order hash brown potatoes cooked dry. Now, they might not always be perfect, but if you don't say cooked dry, you will get them swimming in oil. And at least they know that you're concerned about getting a low-fat potato. Then we order salsas and ketchups. We order oatmeal, no butter or milk. You have to specify this because that's the way they cook their oatmeal. At home, I cook my oatmeal with water and just make it a little bit thinner. And I don't have to add milk or butter, but in a hotel, 
They don't know that. So make sure you specify it. We order whole wheat toast dry. And then we get various jellies. All, almost all hotels and restaurants will have some type of an herbal tea. And maybe a juice. Different types of fruit. Every place around the country will have this. We were traveling in Florida several months ago, and we thought, well, we'll just try and see what we can do if we walk into Denny's. So we walked into Denny's, and there's a huge menu in Denny's. And we found hash brown potatoes. We found oatmeal. We found grits. So we ordered our hash brown potatoes, cooked dry. They almost got them perfect. They were really good. They made the oatmeal without milk or butter. They made the grits without milk or butter. We had dry toast. This same breakfast you can get at a Denny's, which you would think of as a fast food place, I guess. One of the easiest places to go to get healthy food is a Mexican restaurant. What's the first thing that happens when you walk in the door of a Mexican restaurant? They bring you chips, right? A big basket of greasy chips. And the salsa that comes with it is almost always okay. So you tell them, please take the chips away and bring me some soft corn tortillas. Now, soft corn tortillas have no oil in them. They come nice and warm, usually wrapped up in a little package or otherwise in a tortilla server. And you can break off pieces and dunk them into the salsa. Have a healthy appetizer instead of filling up on all those greasy chips. The next thing to ask is, do you have whole beans? Most Mexican restaurants cook their beans in a big pot, just like I do. And when they want to make refried beans, they scoop out the beans, put them in a frying pan, add some oil or lard, or whatever else they're going to use, and mash them up. And those are the refried beans. But in the back are still the whole beans. So you can get an excellent bean burrito made in a corn or flour tortilla with whole beans, rice, lettuce, tomatoes, salsa. Make sure you tell them no cheese, no sour cream, or otherwise they'll think that's what you want. And that's a very healthy, delicious meal. There are a lot of other places around now that actually serve steamed veggies and mushrooms and things like that in their burritos. And so if you look over the menu, don't be just stuck with one thing and fixate on one. Look through the menu and see what else they offer on some of their other burritos. And then you can ask for a bean burrito, and I want this and this and this, and I'll take this from this dish over here. And you can create your own burritos just by jumping around on the menu, and most restaurants will do this for you. You just have to figure that from now on, you're not going to be able to go into a restaurant and say, I'll have number 10, because it doesn't work that way anymore. You have to tell them exactly what you want in your food. Japanese restaurants are another place you can get healthy food. This whole platter on the top is filled with vegetable sushi. Now, I know a lot of people, when they hear the word sushi, they automatically think of raw fish. And they say, oh, no, I'm not going there. But all Japanese restaurants have a wide assortment of vegetable sushi, which is vegetables with white steamed rice. No fat. It's white rice, but it's fat-free. Rolled around the vegetables, and then usually some seaweed rolled around that. We have made whole meals out of just vegetable sushi. Most places will also have miso soup, the steamed soybeans, the cabbage salad. And a lot of times, if you ask, many Japanese restaurants will make you a vegetable udon soup. They all know how to do it. A lot of times, it's not on the menu. But most places will have udon noodles, and they can put together a vegetable udon soup. This says John's favorite, California Thai. John's favorite is not Thai food. Mary's favorite is Thai food. And so I drag him to Thai restaurants whenever I can. And there are many good Thai restaurants that have excellent 
vegetarian meals. And they will have a vegetarian section right on their menu. So all you're really concerned about there is you go to the vegetarian section, you look for something, then you say, can you make this for me without oil or as little oil as possible? And most places will say, sure, no problem. And they'll have appetizers and some, usually they'll have um, several choices in vegetable soups. So you can get a good meal at a Thai restaurant. This is Mary's favorite, California Thai. They have over 26 items on the menu that are McDougal-style foods there. So you can go in. That would be one place where you can say, yes, I'll have number 10. But all Thai restaurants will be able to accommodate you to some extent. Chinese restaurants are the same. These places cook your food to order. When you go in and order, then they're going to cook it for you. Thai restaurants, Chinese restaurants. And they, again, are going to have a vegetarian section on their menu. So that's where you start. And then you say the same thing. Can you make this for me with no oil or as little oil as possible? And most places will be more than happy to do this. There are a wide variety of things that almost all Chinese restaurants have on their menu. Uh, steamed pot stickers, vegetable soups, broccoli with Chinese mushrooms is on almost every Chinese menu. Mushu vegetables. A lot of times mushu comes with pork or chicken or other things in it, but if you ask them, can you make this mushu for me with just the vegetables, most places will do that. Vegetable chow mein is on almost every Chinese menu. And brown rice. Now, if you ask for brown rice in most Chinese restaurants, you will get white rice with soy sauce on it. <laughs> it's brown, but it's not the healthy kind. Some places do have brown rice, but most of them do not. Indian restaurants. Now, Indian restaurants are a little different because most of their recipes have to be cooked ahead of time and then refrigerated because they're long cooking items like potatoes and beans. And then you order from that. What we have found out is that most Indian restaurants don't cook using a lot of oil. They like to add the oil afterward. After they heat up the food, after you order it, then what they do is they drizzle this ghee over the top of your food, and ghee is clarified butter. And so you tell them, hold the ghee, or I don't want any butter. Same thing is true with their breads. Almost all Indian restaurants have wonderful flatbreads. If you don't tell them, they will come out slathered with butter. But otherwise, most of them are fairly healthy. Some of them are even whole wheat. But if you tell them to leave off the butter, then you'll do okay. Italian foods. Italian foods are a little more difficult because a lot of restaurants use a lot of olive oil, even when they're making their red sauce. Their marinara sauce will have a lot of oil in it. Uh, lots of times, some of the chefs will be creative enough to make you something with fresh tomatoes and fresh bell peppers and things like that. Otherwise, the best way to do it is to ask for the sauce on the side or tell them to use half the sauce they usually use when they make the pasta. When you order a salad, tell them to put the dressing on the side. That way you can use as much or as little as you wish. And make sure to ask questions. When we went to this restaurant, John and I sent our waitress back to the kitchen three times because we didn't believe they didn't put any dairy in the cream soup. And after the third time, she came back and she said, oh, they finally broke down and told me what their secret ingredient was. It was pears. And it made the soup really creamy, and it was delicious. And I never would have thought to use pears in a cream soup. I've tried it since, and it works very well. But you have to ask questions. More and more places are offering meat-free burgers on their menu. Lots of places make their own from scratch, and those are usually the healthier ones because they'll make them with grains and beans and stuff like that. But almost anywhere you go in the country, you can at least find a garden burger on the menu. Now, a garden burger is not the healthiest choice, but it's better than eating a beef burger. So if there's nothing else on the menu and you're hungry, at least you have that choice. Submarine sandwiches are found all over the country and even outside of the country. 
And you go in and order a vegetable sub with a wide variety of vegetables, no mayonnaise, no cheese, and tell them not to drizzle the oil on it after they're all done. But you can have a very healthy, fast lunch by going to a sub sandwich shop. Many supermarkets have salad bars where you can pick up a fast lunch. And you would go through this and do just like John did at, the, at Sizzler. Choose the healthy things, put together a big salad lunch, and take it with you. And don't forget to order vegetarian food when you travel. All airlines offer wonderful vegan items, and usually it's much better than what everybody else is getting. The only problem is, of course, they don't always get it on, but at least if you call ahead, most of the time, it'll be there for you. And some of the airlines are getting rather creative in what they offer. When you eat out, think ethnic. An ethnic restaurant is going to be a better choice, Mexican, Italian, Indian, Chinese, Thai. They are more used to cooking vegetarian foods. And you'll have a better choice at most of these places than you would at an American-style restaurant. Ask questions. Be sure to ask them. A lot of times we'll go into some place and we'll sit down and we'll look at the menu and we'll go, oh dear, this is going to be tough. And so the waiter will come over and John will say, you know, we're vegetarians. What can you do for us? And a lot of times you'll be really surprised. We've been places that say, oh, we, we have vegetarian food. It's just not on the menu. And a lot of times they'll go back to the kitchen and they'll say, oh, well, the chef said he could do this and this and this for you. And sometimes you end up with an absolutely wonderful meal. So make sure you ask when you go out how they can help you, how they can make this dining experience better for you. And that's the whole point of a restaurant. They're there to serve you food. And they want you to be happy, at least most of them do. And never give up. I know there's a lot of people who will walk into a restaurant, look at the menu, and say, oh, there's nothing I can eat here. I might as well just have a steak. <laughs> you know? They don't want to take the time to ask questions or see what they can do. They'll just take the easy way out. Don't do it. There are so many good things that you can eat when you're out that all you have to do is be assertive and ask for them. And most places will be more than happy to make you happy. Thank you all. You've been a wonderful audience.